you've noticed they ramp up in difficulty, right? So let's have a go at these. Everyone should be able to do this, sorry, this very first one, right? The very first one. I only have to do one thing to both sides in order to get the king by himself in order to solve for x. What do I do to both sides? No, don't tell me the answer, tell me what to do. Yeah? Plus two on each side. Good. I add two both sides, that's going to get rid of my minus two. And when I put it on the right hand side, when I add two, I get seven. seven. Fantastic. That's all you needed to do, right? When you have a look at number two, there's a little more going on, but not that much, right? Would you like me to get rid of the one or the three first? One. Let's get rid of the one, okay? So if I take away one from both sides, on the left that leaves me with? Nine. On the nine. left that leaves me with? Eight. Eight. And on the right, I get nine. Now what do I do? Divide by three. Division, perfect. So I get an answer. Okay. By the way, just quickly, remember, we always know if a solution is a solution or not, because you can check, you can test. If I put three in, Will it work out? Three times three is? Nine. Nine plus one, sure enough, it gives you 10. Okay, excellent. All right, now we get to three and four. Things are really more involved. This is what we were doing just in yesterday's lesson. So, I'm gonna start question three up here. I'm, I'm gonna need some lines. Five t minus two equals t plus 14. Can someone give me a suggestion for a first line? Yes. Um, minus two and then minus, oh, Jones. Plus two and then Good. Three. So the minus two is what I want to get rid of. So I'm going to add two to both sides. That leaves me with 5t on the left and what on the right? T, t plus 16. Perfect. Nailed it. Okay. Now, from there, from there, I have the t's in two spots and I want them all in one spot. I want to collect like terms. So Brandon, want to give me a suggestion? Uh, you, you take to a, like, last one. I take away, I minus t from both sides, right? When I do that to the left hand side, that leaves me with 5 t's, take away 1, 4 t. When I do it to the right, that t just disappears, so I just get left with the 16. Last step, divide by 4, okay? Which just leaves me with 4. Just a quick note before we leave this question. Uh, you will meet t as a, as a pro numeral. You'll meet it all the time. I know x is the most common one, but t does come up. When you do write your T's, I'm going to encourage you just like I have, even if you don't normally write it, put a nice curly tail on your T so you don't mix it up with a plus sign, okay? Um, T's come up enough that you might as well know how to write them so you don't get confused. Yes? Why do they use the two letters that look most like? Yeah, Yeah, sure. Um, the, X, the X I don't really have that much of an answer yeah. for. I can tell you there's a really easy answer for why they use T because these numbers, right? Sorry, I should say. These pronumerals, they represent numbers that you don't know what they are, right? Like variables, unknowns, okay? Two very common, <laughs> common numbers you want to work out are time and temperature, both of which start with T. So when people are writing equations and like, I want to find out when something happens, or when I want to find out how hot or cold it is, they'll just use T. So that's a bit of a, that's our, that's our language, I guess. Annoying. Sorry. All right, last one. Do you want to do the last one or do you want to add something else? Okay, sure. Now, four is the hardest. It was the ones from the last part of last exercise, so that's why I've snuck it in the end. Four minus y equals two y plus three, okay? Now, I'm gonna to try to approach it the same way we did this previous one, right? The first thing we did was we got rid of the number on the left-hand side. That's a 4. More specifically, it's a plus 4. How do I get rid of plus 4? I take away 4, okay? So when I take away 4 from this side, I just get left with minus y. When I take away 4 from this side, it's going to be 3 take away 4, uh, which is minus 1. You've got to watch out. These negatives flying everywhere. They can really trip you up. Okay? 3 minus 4, that'll leave you with minus 1. Great, got all the numbers over on the right hand side. Now I need to get all the y's on the left hand side. How do I get rid of this 2y over here? Just like here, you took away a t from both sides. I'm going to take away 2y from both sides. I want to get rid of two of them, right? So you've got minus y here. If I go minus y, I might even write this line so my head doesn't get too confused. Minus y, minus 2y. And then here, 2y minus 2y, that's just going to disappear, leave me with minus 1. So what have I got on the left there? Minus y 
That's that's negative. And then I go even more negative, right? The three y. It'll be minus three y. Minus three y. That's equal to minus one. That's really tricky. That's what makes these questions hard with these negatives flying around and how they interact. Okay? I've got one last step now, all right? Just like I had here, I need to divide by something. What should I divide by? Minus, minus three? So that's this, right? What happens to those negatives? They cancel each other out, right? So I just get left with a third. 